Good evening. Welcome to worship this evening. Special welcome to any guests or vis visitors that we have with us. We also welcome all those worshiping online, listening on the radio, and watching on cable or TV. I'm conducting the service, Pastor Nick Quinette, and our preacher is Pastor Tim Miller, and our organist is Mrs. Becky Fisher. Our theme for this second Sunday of Advent is prepare your hearts. After the, ser the service, I invite you all to talk about what we learned from God's word today. We continue with our opening hymn, hymn number 27, O Jesus, Lamb of God, You Are. We continue our service on page 26 in the front part of the hymnal. Please stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. The 
works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, and prepare the way for your, whole, your only Son. By his coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first lesson for this evening comes from Isaiah chapter 40 and will serve as the basis for our sermon. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all the, their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because of the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a holy mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accom accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with the psalm. Psalm 85, found on page 97 in the front part of the hymnal.
Our second lesson for this evening comes from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and the speed of speed it's coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. This is the word of the Lord, the verse of the day. Alleluia. Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. All mankind will see God's salvation. Alleluia. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel for this evening comes from Mark chapter 1. The beginning of the gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 16 on Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry.
May our Lord God this evening comfort you through the power of his word. Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a word used in our text that is so nice, the Lord used it twice. It's a word that sits well in our hearts because it comes from our Lord God. It is comfort. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. God is speaking through the prophet Isaiah, and the prophet Isaiah is crying out, Comfort, comfort God's people. And he's talking to the messengers of God's word. He's talking to the prophets. He's talking to eventually the evangelists and the apostles and also to pastors today. He really is also talking to every Christian. Comfort, comfort my people. God wants us to comfort each other. And I have the wonderful privilege and honor of comforting you with the Word of God tonight. Comfort, comfort my people. We're going to take a look at this with two parts. The first part is where God prepares our hearts for that comfort that we all need. And then we're going to take a break and we're going to sing two verses of a hymn that fits this part perfectly. And then at the end, we'll sing the remaining verses of that hymn. Comfort, comfort my people. This is a time when God's people were being hauled off to the Babylonian captivity. The Babylonian army was coming down and taking Judah away. And for the most part, it was deserved. God's judgment was coming upon them. They had rebelled again and again and again against God. They had gone their own way instead of God's way, and now judgment was coming down on them. But it was also a message of repentance. God wanted them to turn, to turn back to him. So he was calling them back. The consequences that they were going through, much of those consequences were because of their own doing. Turning from God, going their own way. And God was calling them back. Now, this section of Scripture applies to us today. For we are sinners as well, and many times we bring consequences on ourselves because of our sin. And we know what we deserve because of our sin. We know that we deserve eternal hell. What the people of God in the Old Testament were going through was a great deal of pain and hurt. They were going through hard times and they needed God's comfort. So we go through difficult times and we need the comfort that only God can give. But first God makes us uncomfortable. Listen to what he says in our text. A voice says, cry out. That's announce Announced to my people. And I said, what shall I cry? All men are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. And then it repeats it to make it plain to us. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. Have you ever thought of yourself like grass or a flower? Think about grass. In the spring, when the rains come and the sun shines, the grass turns green, it's beautiful, it's luscious, and then what happens to it? In the middle of winter, you take a look at it, it's dry, it's brown, it's dead looking. Think of a flower, it rises up, there's such beauty, but what happens? It withers and it dies. So it is with all of us. We're born, we grow, sometimes we think we're pretty good and beautiful, but what happens to us? We wither and we die. As to our bodies, they are, Im they are mortal, perishable, transitory. 
All you have to do is read the obituary section and you realize, yes, we all die. Withers and die. S sometimes you read that obituary section and they have some popular people, some well-known people that are mentioned. And you think to yourself, how could that happen? That person wasn't supposed to die. Maybe it was a person close to you and you think to yourself, that person wasn't supposed to die. But death is here as a result of sin. The Bible is clear on that, that the wages of sin is death. It is the great equalizer, isn't it? It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how popular you are, how well known you are. We all face death. And that shows us how much we need this comfort. The grass withers, the flowers fade. But then what does God say? He says, the word of our God will stand forever. Ah, there we have it. The way the Lord God gives us his comfort is through the word of God. That's why I said I have this wonderful privilege and opportunity to comfort God's people with the comfort only he can give through the power of his word. This word is sure. This word is something that you can always count on. It is certain. It is what brings us the comfort that we need. Now, as we take a look at this comfort that God gives to us, we realize that we need our hearts prepared for it. And God prepares our hearts. This also makes us uncomfortable. A voice of one calling. In the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Prepare the way of the Lord. This is a prophecy also of John the Baptist's coming. You remember John the Baptist. He's the one that was sent to be the one who prepared the way for the Lord. The forerunner, the way preparer. And how was he to do that? With a message of repentance, a baptism of repentance. He was to declare to the people, repent for the kingdom of God is near. That is the same message that we need to prepare for Christmas, for Christ's coming, and Christ's coming into our hearts through the power of the gospel. Our hearts need to be prepared, and God prepares them through his word. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. All obstructions and objections to the gospel need to be removed in preparation for the gospel coming into our hearts. The hills and the mountains need to be removed. It's not talking about literal hills and mountains. It's talking about the hills and mountains in your heart. They need to be removed. It's talking about, for example, sinful pride that gets in the way of the gospel. That needs to be removed. You know what I'm talking about when I speak of sinful pride. We all have it. We're all sinful by nature. During these COVID times, have there been times when we have unjustly and hypocritically judged people? Maybe we have gotten really angry and we've lashed out at people. We've lost our temper. Maybe there are times when we call somebody a sinner, but they're not even sinning because it's our opinion, but we want to make it worse for them, and we put on them a load where it has nothing to do with God's Word. It's just our own opinion. We have to be careful, but it shows us our sin, doesn't it? And we realize our hearts need to be prepared, prepared for the comfort that God gives us. So let's go to our hymn, and we're going to be singing verses 3 and 4 first, and then we'll sing at the end verses 1 and 2. And it's because these two last verses fit well what we just heard about God preparing our hearts for the comfort that we all need. 
Let's sing together hymn number 11, verses 3 and 4. Comfort, comfort all my people. In the hymn we sung about John the Baptist, and we learned that there is a prophecy here of John the Baptist and his coming and his message. Remember his message? Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up. We didn't talk about that side of the message. Every valley is to be raised up. When there is a valley in a person's heart, that could be an individual who is doubting the promise of God that there is forgiveness for that individual. That person is maybe feeling worthless, feeling like there is no way that God will forgive their sin. I remember a girl once that I was talking to, a young teenager. She came up to me after hearing God's word and it struck her, the law hit her, and she said, I just wish I could be born again because of all the wrongs that I've done in my life. And I said, through Christ, there is that rebirth. Your sins are forgiven. That's the comfort that we can give to people. And so that is the raising up of this valley, the filling it in with God's grace and God's love. Might be that individual who is so depressed about certain sins that they have done and they need the comfort of God's word. And here it is. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. There would be a time when the people of God of the Old Testament would return. They would be released from that Babylonian captivity, and they would return to the promised land. Oh, that would be a good day with much cheering and celebration. But this is talking about, oh, so much more. It's talking about that which comes 
through God, the Lord God who came into this world. It speaks of him as coming with might and power, but yet wrapped up in gentleness. It, it speaks of him as a shepherd, but as the good shepherd who would take care of them, his people, and watch over them and be ready to die for them. And yes, that's exactly what he did. He went to the cross and he died for his people, for you and for me. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords who came fiercely battling our enemies, but yet in such a humble way, humbling himself all the way to the cross so that we would have the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. There's more comfort here. Comfort, comfort, my people, our text begins, says your God. Speak tenderly, that is, speak to their hearts. Speak to their hearts. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. That her hard service, it says, has been completed. That can be translated literally that the warfare is really over. That made me think of an anniversary very close to today, December 7th, 1941. The bombing of Pearl Harbor. And then a number of years later, the victory and the war ending. I've seen pictures, wasn't there, but I've seen pictures of the celebration that took place. People would go up to strangers and celebrate with them. Confetti would be thrown. They were in the streets, jumping up and down. Such joy. Well, this is talking about the warfare being over because Jesus won. Our Savior won. He gained the victory for us. And now we have peace. Peace with God. He gained the victory. Victory over sin. Victory over the devil. Victory over death. By his death, death was beaten. By his resurrection, we know that full well. This is the comfort that God gives to you tonight. It's the comfort he wants you to take out into the world. What greater comfort is there for God's people and for the people in the world? We have received, it says, from the Lord's hand, double for all our sins. Yes, double. We deserve hell, but instead God has abundantly showered his grace upon us again and again. Wow. This is what God wants to be shared, and that's why he cries out. That's why we have this word so nice that God used twice. Comfort, comfort, my people. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Together we open our hymnals to the Nicene Creed, which we find on page 31 in the front portion of the hymnal, and we confess our faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became full of human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Is that this time that we think usually of our offering? And if you brought an offering, you can place that offering in the slotted cabinet at that entrance and the slotted box at this entrance. Or you can drop it off or send it in to the church office, as maybe you've been doing. Or you can give online. And if you'd like help to do that, we certainly are ready and willing to help you at the church office. We continue as we think about the love of God and we think about the sermon and that second part especially and let us now sing together hymn number 11 verses 1 and 2, Comfort, Comfort, All My People. prayers for this evening. We have a prayer for the baptism of Colton Retschlag, who will be baptized at the 1030 service tomorrow. And also for David Wenlin, the son of Pastor Mark and Louise Wenlin, who was diagnosed with cancer. And also for Mark and Louise's two grandchildren, Henry and Otto, who will have surgery this week. Please stand for prayer. Dear Gracious Lord, thank you for preparing our hearts for our Savior through the power of your word. Continue to remove our sinful pride and any doubt we, we may have when it comes to your promises. Without you, we would be lost as we are like grass or the flowers of the field. We praise you for how abundantly you have comforted us in, us in our sin. Glad tidings have been announced to us again today. You have spoken tenderly to us that our sins are forgiven in Christ. Help us glorify your name every day. Dear Lord, thank you for your gift of baptism through which you give the promise of forgiveness won by Christ on the cross. Thank you for the promise that will be given to Colton, who will be baptized tomorrow. Dear Holy Spirit, through holy baptism you give and strengthen faith through the power of the gospel. Keep Colton always fervent in spirit and joyful in hope so that he honors your holy name here his whole life and at last receives, together with all your people, the promised inheritance of eternal life in heaven through Jesus Christ. Dear Heavenly Father, please also be with David, the son of Louise and Mark Wenlin, and his family, as he has been diagnosed with cancer. If it be your will, O great physician, grant him healing. 
Also give David confidence in you. Strengthen him and his family with the faith you, in your promises of grace and salvation. Guide the doctors in their treatment so that he may receive the best care possible. And also, dear Heavenly Father, be also with Louise and Mark's grandchildren, Henry and Otto, this week, as they both will be undergoing surgery. Guide the hand of the surgeons and grant these two little lambs of yours full recovery. In our Savior's name, we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love, he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Through his holy prophets, he promised a king to bring light to those living in darkness and in the shadow of death. Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in, remem in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. seated. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members and those united with us in faith and doctrine come to Holy Communion, both sides will approach up the middle aisle at the same time, but staggered with the appropriate distancing from the person ahead of you. Approach continuous communion individually or as a household. For unique cases, gluten-free wafers and plastic sleeves and non-alcoholic wine are available. Return to your pew by the side aisle, placing your cup and receptacle. You will find two places to place it. First, the cup with the bread is in between the two tables and then the receptacle along the walls for the wine. The general blessing will be given at the close of Holy Communion. Please come for all things are now ready.
Please stand. Now may this true body and blood strengthen and preserve you in the true faith for life everlasting. Go in peace knowing that all of your sins are forgiven. We continue with the thanksgiving found on page 36. of your people, O Lord, that the lips which have praised you here may glorify you in the world, that the eyes which have seen the coming of your Son may long for his coming again, and that all who have received in his true body and blood the pledge of your forgiveness may be restored to live a new and holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. Good evening. It's great to have you all in worship this evening, especially all the Luther Prep students. I know we've missed having you here in worship this, this year, and we missed hearing your voices this last Wednesday and this coming Wednesday, so it's great to have you all here. We're really happy to have you worshiping with us. We have a couple of announcements. Uh, class, uh, Bible class continues on Sunday with Professor Kobleski entitled The Christian Heart and God's Law. Um, and also, Bible class on Wednesdays will not meet until January 6th. So if you've been coming to those Wednesday classes, they're not meeting until January 6th. Door offerings um, are this weekend for the next children's Christmas bags. You'll find a basket in the back of church. It's got a sign on it if you'd like to give some to help fund um, the children's Christmas bags. And also, um, not this next week, but the week after, we're having the, the children's um, Christmas service. And um, we believe that there will be a lot of room for, especially um, with social distancing, at each of the four children's Christmas services. We hope that you're able to attend one of them. Any who are deciding um, what service they want to go to, please consider Friday at 9 a.m. if that works for you. Now, normally that might be one that there's a lot of parents um, coming over, but since part of this is going to be online with the kids, uh, we don't anticipate that to be a, a, a big strain this time. So we're hoping to have still people coming to that. So don't feel that there's going to be one that's going to be overwhelmed. Um, if you can come to that 9 o'clock one, we're really encouraging that. Uh, see the special um, services in the bulletin. We have the midweek Advent services at 3.30 and 7.30. Uh, stewardship meeting is rescheduled for December 16th at 5 p.m. And next year's envelopes are available downstairs. If you haven't um, found your box or you don't have a box, please let the office know, and uh, we will take care of that as soon as we can. Uh, thank you for cooperating with the safety guidelines. If anybody, some can help sanitize the pews after the service for tomorrow, that would be, that would be much appreciated. We also have a marriage moment this week, so we'll watch that, and may the Lord bless your week. Hello, and welcome to Marriage Moments. In Genesis chapter 2, we're told that God formed the man, and we're told that God made the woman. Both are Hebrew words which are beautiful, spectacular, glorious. But they're different. Why different words? It would seem to make the most sense that God was tipping us off to the wonderful fact that men and women are different. Men have certain gifts and talents. Women have certain gifts and talents. Individual husbands have certain gifts and talents. Individual wives have certain gifts and talents. And that's wonderful. Because where you are strong, perhaps your spouse is weak and vice versa. 
And so cherish the differences, husbands and wives. Cherish the differences that you see in each other because God has made you both exactly who he wants you to be. And that's a moment for your marriage.